um, to meet Thomas Berry for the first time was to feel the effect of the formative years that Andy's just described. An extraordinary human being who sought knowledge not for power or for acquisition, but for understanding. He wanted to understand how we had separated ourselves from the natural world and how we could find our way home. His search developed both the depth of his soul and the breadth of his universal vision. Regarding the sacred, he wrote this, the sense of the sacred is at the heart of it all, he said. We will not save what we do not love. And it is also true that we will neither save nor love what we do not experience as sacred. This evening, I'll share some personal stories of my experience with Thomas and his sense of the sacred and the human earth relationship, which were one and the same. When I met Thomas Berry for the first time in 1978, it was at New York LaGuardia Airport. He had established the Riverdale Center for Religious Research, which was attracting scholars from all over the world who wanted to integrate his vision into their work. His sister had given me a monograph of his to read, the new story it was. And I was so touched by the quality of his thought that I called and asked him if I could come and meet him. And of course he said, come right ahead. And so it was that I flew into LaGuardia Airport on a January morning just as it started to snow. I was surprised to find Thomas at the gate to greet me. He was in shirt sleeves, having given his jacket to someone in a London subway who needed it more than he did, his sister later told me. I was deeply moved by the extraordinary kindness I felt in his presence. We spent the next 45 minutes looking for his car in the LaGuardia Airport <laughs> parking lot. It was true. And when we found it, it was an elderly model in which the window on the passenger side didn't work and the windshield wipers weren't working. But undaunted, Thomas set forth toward the Bronx and the Riverdale Center while the snow slanted in through the side I was sitting on, and he peered cautiously out onto the highway. At one moment, without turning away, he said to me, I hope I'm present for you today. I've just come from a meeting with Jacques Cousteau on who owns the seas. In the years that followed, I studied his writings and I found the sense of the sacred running through all of his work like a golden thread. As Goethe might have put it, the sacred had become the inner tissue of his life as a monk, a priest, a scholar, a cultural historian, a geologian, a shaman, a storyteller. From 1999 to 2009, after my husband's death and after Thomas had retired from the Riverdale Center in New York and moved back to Greensboro, I had the great privilege of knowing Thomas Berry as a friend, a mentor, and a companion, as he called me. Now, when you look up the word companion in the dictionary, it will say bread fellow, <laughs> referring to those who traveled together on religious pilgrimages in the Middle Ages and shared bread of all kinds. Thomas had many such companions all over the world, from many walks of life, religious traditions, ethnic backgrounds, who walked with him, seeking a new context, a new understanding and new direction for their lives. Companions looking for new ways of seeing and being. 
In those 10 years, we met every week or two for lunch or dinner at the Green Valley Grill in Greensboro. I'm sure many of you have met Thomas Berry at the Green Valley Grill, where I would take copious notes. I wore this pen on a chain around my neck, and I usually had a small notebook with me. Uh, Thomas liked for me to take notes. He was a consummate teacher, and he was happy for me to do that. On days that I forgot my notebook, Thomas would push his cocktail napkin across the table <laughs> without missing a beat in what he was saying to me. In 2000, after we established our center on the Earth Sanctuary at Timberlake, Thomas would often come on Friday evenings where Andy met him. Uh, to, he would come over and he would speak at gatherings to uh, talk about the human-Earth relationship made films which highlighted his work, shared meals with companions and visitors who came from all over the world, came for special celebrations, and even on one occasion conducted a baptism for one of my grandchildren at our small chapel. I took him to meetings in Raleigh and Asheville where he did his poetry uh, and visited him every Thursday morning at 10 o'clock in the last year of his life. Though the distance of my physical pilgrimage with Thomas over the years was small, the thoughts of his sense of the sacred radiated out into a vast universe where his mind and spirit lived. My journey with Thomas Berry was not of miles, but of moments. I'll tell you about some of the moments. Moment number one. I was grateful for an invitation in August of 1999 to meet in Greensboro for dinner at the Green Valley Grill. On the evening we were to meet, however, my heart was heavy with grief and loneliness. My husband had died only eight weeks soon be before that. I almost canceled out, not wanting to burden him with my emotional state. But I did go anyway, and I found his deep presence and kindness an extraordinary blessing, again, as I had the first time we met. When he asked me, as he always did with everyone, tell me about yourself, I found myself describing my feelings much to my embarrassment. He listened deeply, and then he said this very slowly, stay with the grief and it will heal you. Most people bob right back up to the surface. As for your feelings of loneliness and lack of a sense of community, why, you live in the midst of an earth community of trees and rocks and water and creatures who are protecting and caring for you as you are caring for them. You live in a mutually enhancing relationship with all about you. I remember feeling something strengthen within me as he said those words, and I felt my darker feelings uncoil as I drove back to Timberlake, reflecting on his words. When I returned home, I walked on the trail in the woods with my small dog and repeated to myself and everything around me, a mutually enhancing relationship. The loneliness lessened as I felt the truth of his words. I didn't know it then, but my own pilgrimage with Thomas Berry and his sense of the sacred had begun. Another moment, shortly thereafter, while seeking to begin a center at Timberlake for children and teachers, I invited several colleagues from different disciplines to come join me on the land at Timberlake Farm and walk the trails carrying this question. What, in your view, to each of them, is significant for young children, for children and young people to learn from the earth as we go into the new century. Wearing slick sole shoes, Thomas arrived to walk the trails with us. Afraid he might fall, I offered to take him in the woods on my small golf cart, which he stoutly refused. <laughs> 